Hey gang, welcome back to Big Board. So uh, I thought we would take a look at Tunisia. Uh, it's an OCS title and it ties in nicely to our exploration of 1942 and all that sort of good stuff in the chronological, chronological walkthrough. However, what I have done is uh, cheated a little bit. Uh, those, of you who, those of you who have played this game before will realize that we've got this kind of set up for the Kasserine Pass onwards, which technically is March 1943. So we've skated, uh, we've skated a few months from November. And primarily because, in my experience with these games, once you hit 30 odd turns with a few hundred, four, five hundred units, uh, there's a, it becomes weighty and difficult to play by itself. So I, because I wanted to see how this game plays, I'm curious, I, I figured I'd just try this scenario and I think it has 30 or 35 turns or something like that, which would be more than enough. It'll run us through uh, half of February, all of March, and then we'll get into April. Uh, we'll get to experience some of the history and some of the interesting parts of the battle uh let's so we'll see right so this so let's enough about the 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 timing let's talk about the game itself my first reaction when i put these maps out and started putting some units on the board was this would have to be without a doubt one of the ugliest ocs titles i've ever come across the choices of colors particularly compared to DAC. Uh, and DAC 2, it's just, it's really muddy and bland. Uh, you see, you've got hill terrain, you've got rough terrain, and you've got mountains which have uh, dual color, but any color uh, that you see that's either of those two colors are mountains. Uh, you've got this uh, primary road, which is uh, splotchy. It's supposed to be r a dark red, uh, but it ends up being brown which doesn't really look very attractive on the map itself. Then you've got British units, which are brown, almost the same color as the, the map here. And then you've got the the Germans, which are, I guess you would call it light brown or tan or beige or something like that. So anyway, so, it, so visually it's not very attractive to me. I, I'm not that excited about the map. The layout, the, the terrain effects chart, it's all the way down there in the bottom left-hand corner. Extremely inconvenient location for it. Very nice layout here across the top where we've got holding boxes for units. We've got all the port capacities and the distances to and from the various uh, off-map airfields, which uh, in DAC were handled a lot more elegantly than this, but that's okay. Uh, Sicily box here, you've got your your months and weeks there. So it's, you know, that's all efficient, right? Don't mind that at all. Yeah, so that, so the, so the, the package itself to me is really kind of meh. So that's enough about that. Let's move on and talk about the game itself and some of the you know, the this the situation that we're faced with here. So the axis are on the back foot for the time being. The the allies have pushed up to within fifteen twenty hexes of Tunis, which is one of their victory conditions. This is Tunis right here at the bottom of the map here, bottom of the screen, you should say. And they also have to capture Bazette, uh, which is in here. And to make it a stomping victory, you know, uh, this town, where is it? It's not this guy. Maybe it is this guy down here. I forget. This is a town down in here and it starts with an S. Uh, we've got to, the allies have got to capture that. If they don't, and if it's controlled by the, by the Axis, then they would earn a minor victory for keeping one, two, three, and there's a fourth town in here somewhere. If they kept four locations, which would be very tough. Uh, possibly, I don't know, I haven't, really, I haven't played, so I don't know. Uh, so uh, you would have a fair amount of, uh, of maneuver to try and capture all these things. Now, uh, you see this big stack of stuff off on the left-hand side? That's, the, that's Montgomery's 8th Army. They're the guys that uh, destroyed Rommel, and then Rommel fled uh, west, and 
Montgomery then elected to dawdle for, I'm sure, for very good reasons. Because I say, oh, chap, he knew what he was doing, right? Um, Eighth Army enters here any time from the 15th onward if you roll a 9 at the beginning of the turn. So that will, uh, that will impact what happens to all these forces here and all that sort of good stuff. So uh, we've got a massive force here, which will more than likely... Now, who did that? Did I just do that? Uh, steamroller through these guys here. Although this is actually a fairly tough little situation here. Uh, there's a couple of interesting other, uh, a couple of other interesting elements here. 15th Panzer, 21st Panzer, and 10th Panzer are positioned along these access routes. And there is really nothing very much here to prevent them from making a fairly aggressive counterattack. Now, the way they're positioned, they can also reinforce back down if the 8th Army comes in. But if the 8th Army starts to lag, here's the DAC headquarters right here. Uh, if the 8th Army lags, there's an opportunity. If we took uh, 15th, is kind of beaten up. But if 21st and or 10th got into the action, they could really take a chunk out of 1st uh, Armoured down here. They could then press deeper in against uh, the supply lines and perhaps cause some trouble for the forces closer to the coast, although I don't think that's going to be particularly effective just given the numerous avenues of, uh, of, uh, of supply line, etc., etc. There are a couple of French divisions in the backfield over here, which you just probably just can't see. They're just out of shot. That could be used to reinforce down here, and probably as a strategy for the Allied side is that they'll push some forces here down, and I think maybe take some of First Armoured and roll those guys down to immediately reinforce. That said, that gives the Germans some other opportunities to either, like I said, counterattack here or bring 10th Panzer up. They could uh, cycle up through here and take on the Moroc French Moroccans and 1st and first Infantry from the US and 78th Infantry from the, from the Commonwealth. So there's a few interesting things that can go on. This, all these passes in here look particularly difficult and potentially bloody. Uh, I can't really see that because of the glare, I guess, but uh, those that terrain through there is pretty heavy and and difficult to maneuver in. Neither side has a lot of uh, stuff situ situated to be uh, in offensive mode. In fact, the the English here look very defensive in nature just by the way they're set up. Whereas these guys kind of feel like they're well, oh, okay. Maybe we could uh, maybe we could counterattack. I don't know. That's a kind of that's the feeling I'm getting. There's, these guys here are tough. Anyway, it's going to be an interesting little play. We'll see what happens. I, I'm not going to be rushing through this too much. We're just going to crank along and play a, a turn a week or two or something like that and get as far as we can. It's uh, while it's interesting. It'll be particularly interesting when the when the Eighth Army comes in down here. So that's the situation for Tunisia, and this will be. Uh, filling the slot for July through March, April 43 for African campaign actions other than any singular battles that we play that occurred in 43. All right, talk to you later.